I'm gonna read to you a statement of purpose of a student who was admitted to the Masters of Science in Human-Centered Design and Engineering at the University of Washington. This statement of purpose has two prompts that the student answers below. This essay is a really great example of this student bringing their unique experiences and their unique background to the field of human-centered design. They also get really specific about the kind of work they want to do in human-centered design and are very specific about why the university is a good fit for them. All of that is uh, really great in terms of an example of what to do in your statement of purpose. So let's dive in. Let's start with the prompt for the first essay. How have your prior activities and experiences, e.g. things you have done at school, in the workplace, in your community, and or extracurricular activities prepared you for this program and this field? Please provide a specific example, 600 words maximum. Let's dive in. Step into the circle if you identify as an immigrant. Step into the circle if you identify as a person of color. Step into the circle if you identify with a religion other than Christianity. In a middle school classroom in Venice's free-spirited beach neighborhood, these were some of the statements I stepped forward for in an exercise I used to teach young girls about the intersectionality of their identities. As a mentor for a curriculum-based program, I provided the necessary resources for mentees to navigate important life decisions, confidently determine their futures, and affect community change. The curriculum I taught spanned topics from race and identity to sexual health. I designed the curriculum by tailoring sessions to each learner's unique needs and engaging with mentees through an intersectional lens. I adapted discussion topics and session activities based on survey feedback and question box submissions. I made one-on-one -on -one conversations relevant to the young girls by focusing on how their identities will affect them in other aspects of the curriculum, such as race and prejudice. For a UCLA field trip focused on bringing the arts to women of color, I led a graphic design workshop that utilized my proficiency in design software to help mentees visualize themselves through identity word clouds. My service commitments outside of the university classroom allowed me to understand the perspectives of the Los Angeles community around me, as well as the intersecting facets that formed my own social identity. I applied empathetic design as a service by understanding the mentees I was interacting with to foster a healthy environment for critical exploration free from bias. So this is a really interesting intro paragraph. Uh, a master's of science in human-centered design is a really diverse kind of program. You have a lot of people coming from technical backgrounds, engineering, all that kind of stuff. And we see this person bring a really interesting perspective by talking about identity. And identity is something that's really important in human-centered design because a lot of it is about how do you understand people so that you can design the best programs and products and so forth for that community or that group of people. So it's really interesting that this person is bringing their unique experience and their unique lens as a, as a person in this field. So we see them talking about thinking about identities, intersectionality, working with youth, things that you don't often hear about um, in human-centered design, you know, if someone comes from a more technical background. So we're seeing this person put their best foot forward. And they start out by using some quotes to really put us in the world of where they're coming from. And they start out by throwing us into an experience that they led. And you can see in this first paragraph that there's someone who connects well with people. There's someone who who cares about different um, social issues and talking about things like race. And you can tell that that's a perspective they're gonna bring into this program. While this interparagraph talks about the kind of perspective or lens this person's going to bring to the field, they also mention skills that are relevant to the program of human-centered design. They talk about designing curriculum, they talk about leading a graphic design workshop, so you see that they have some interest in design and they wanna pair that with their perspective on uh, bringing intersectionality and thinking about people's identities into their work. Next paragraph. I studied cognitive science and digital humanities to formulate novel questions within humanistic research and provide answers through digital methodology. As a research assistant for a cognitive development lab, I authored and illustrated a set of children's books to test how predictive contextual cues, such as page color, can influence language learning for prepositions such as in and on among English speakers ages two to five. This research sought to answer how spatial language, which is directly tied to performance in STEM fields, can be applied to current educational instruction and curricula. 
I practice a similar approach for a textual analysis research project that implemented natural language processing to understand notions of difference and self-identity among native leaders. As history is predominantly told from a Euro-American perspective, the project attempted to understand indigenous people's complex relations with settlers in American colonialism for research, instruction, and linguistic applications. I carefully cleaned and prepared text documents from a collection of Treaty Council notes before exploring patterns with various visualization methods. I actively engaged with the creative process as a bridge between design and research and saw how powerful digital imagery could help solve a complex humanistic research question. In this paragraph, we can see that this person has a really interesting background and a really interesting approach they're going to bring to the field. So we see them taking some leadership in some various projects like this research assistant position where they authored and illustrated um, some children's books like, and really we're trying to make connections between that and its impact on performance in STEM. So that's a really interesting project. We also see another example of using natural language processing and applying it to Native American leaders and self-identity. So there's some really interesting things that they're bringing together. Um, and so there, this is an extension from the first paragraph where we see they have this interest interest in um, identities, intersectionality, certain populations, and then we see how that's being explored in different projects that they've worked on, and we're also seeing their leadership. So in your paragraphs, you want to be able to demonstrate your own leadership, and you also want to be able to demonstrate um, what makes you unique, what perspectives are you going to bring uh, into the field that you're applying for. Um, so this is a really great example of this. Um, this, however, is only 600 words as an essay. So there's some things that I wish this person would have gone into more detail about, but since it's only a 600 word essay, that's not the point of these really short essays. Um, but for example, um, I wish I learned about the outcome of their research. They're telling us what their research is seeking to do, but I would have preferred to have heard, well, what was the outcome? What did you learn about um, the changes you made to the illustrations? How did that actually impact uh, the students? Um, so, you know, wish we could have a little more there, but you can see this person still got into this program. So um, we're seeing that what they put together here was really effective. We also see how the examples that they're giving here are things that are very relevant to the field of human-centered design and engineering. They're talking about natural language processing, they're talking about um, identity, they're talking about research. So this is all really good demonstration and examples of skills that they will need in the program they are applying for. Last paragraph in this essay. This past year, I worked with alumni mentors to solve learning obstacles in a remote environment, including retention, virtual engagement, and reliable digital technology. When designing our solution, an online communication application for question and answer asking, curriculum interaction, and keeping in touch, it was essential to consider the affordances and challenges posed by digital technology. Inequities in present day education technology exist due to intersecting disparities in digital literacy and access to technology exacerbated by social, economic, and geographic differences. These experiences have led me to apply for a master in science and human centered design and engineering at the University of Washington to design more equitable digital education solutions that address discrepancies in learning experiences. In this paragraph, we see that they really care about inequities, they care about social justice, and they've kind of alluded to that in the other paragraphs, but what they're saying here is that they really want that to be at the forefront of what they do, and that they want to apply their skills of getting a master's in human-centered design to solving inequities in education. And so here they're getting specific about what they want to do with this program. They want to go into working on digital literacy and access to technology for uh, you know, the lower social economic groups. We see that that's very specific. And in your essays, in your statement of purpose, you want to get really specific about what is it that you want to do in the field for what audience or in what context. That's how you make a powerful statement of purpose when you are getting very specific about what you want to do. And we can see how what they want to do is an extension of the various experiences that they've previously had. So let's look at the second essay. Here's the prompt. 
Please describe your particular interest in human-centered design and engineering and explain what specific elements of the program make it a good fit for you. How will this program assist you in your longer term goals? Please provide specific examples, 600 words maximum. Current education technologies generalize learning experiences and undermine the cultural differences and strengths that I saw firsthand in the classroom. At the University of Washington, I would like to explore how interaction design and intervention-based practices can help create more engaging and meaningful learning experiences focused on sexual health resources and race and identity. I hope to use my time in the HCDE program to humanize digital learning environments and encourage more inclusive experiences for diverse learners. Again, here we see them being very specific about what they want to do while they're in grad school and as part of their career. This is something I call, like a, these sentences, they're almost like a thesis statement. Like they're a thesis statement of your SOP. And I like when people tie everything up in a sentence like this. Generally in an SOP, I love to see a sentence like this uh, close to the beginning of an SOP where it's very clear, this is what I wanna do, this is why I'm going to this school. I'm excited to deliberately embed myself with an interdisciplinary ecosystem that promotes a deep critical analysis of society and challenges the landscape of design systems, ethics, and equity. I appreciate how the College of Engineering program places thoughtful practices at the forefront of emerging technologies, considering both the benefits and harms in a people-first environment. I resonate with Julie Kentz and her current research efforts to understand the family dynamics in remote learning experiences for work and health applications. The project acknowledges disparities in digital learning experiences and implements co-design methods to support families and learners, much like my work with middle school mentees. The HCDE program is right for me because it recognizes the importance of community engagement to ensure accessible and sustainable technologies, such as its K-12 outreach efforts at regional schools. The department delivers on its guiding principles of equity and inclusion by supporting and valuing its counterparts' diversity. Examples of this include diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI mini grants that provide monetary support for community-centered initiatives, as well as student feedback in faculty recruitment. I know that I can contribute my perspective in an academic environment that encourages accountability, responsibility, and student understanding. This is a really great paragraph that shows that this person has really done their homework on this program and they're making a very strong case for why this program is a perfect alignment for what they want to do while they're in grad school. We've seen them talk throughout their essay about identity, about uh, dig digital access and digital literacy and things like that for certain populations. And we see them tie that back very closely to what's happening at the university, that the university has diversity and initiatives, that there's people doing research and using interesting methods that this person can apply to the kind of work they want to do. And so this is a great example for anyone in an SOP. When you are talking about why that university is a good fit, you want to get as specific as possible by talking about different professors, their research, how that work applies to what you want to do. And this person even talks about things that are outside of the classroom. So talking about their work in the community and how the university is actually uh, involve students and accountability and that sort of thing. So that's all really awesome to show. They know what they're getting into at this university and they know that this university is a good fit for them and they're making a strong case for that. My goals in HCDE are to apply the same intersectional lens as I did to student-centered education and humanistic research to applications in design, research, and engineering. I believe more intentional and sustainable learning systems can be attained by focusing on individual community learners' cultural strengths when creating personalized digital learning environments. The program's methodologies and foundations will allow me to humanize the future of education technology through the converging faucets of social identities. Courses such as accessibility and inclusive design will teach me to design for diverse learners by identifying usability obstacles and learning how to overcome such exclusions. Designing for behavior change will ground me in the theoretical framework to implement positive behavior change in both digital and non-digital educational spaces. In addition to being located in Seattle, a hub for transformative technology, the University of Washington offers an inclusive environment for progressive thought and social change. 
The UX Speaker Series brings industry perspectives to discuss current trends, criticism, and opportunities for change in the technology field. I hope to incorporate such feedback in my work, both in the program and as a future professional. I plan to use my time in a student-driven learning environment to collaborate with other empathy-driven individuals, amplify marginalized perspectives, and critically evaluate current technologies from a human perspective. I am confident that human-centered design and engineering will shape me to be a practitioner that is both socially responsible and creatively curious. So this person ties us all together really well by continuing to drive home. Here are the classes and the environment that is going to be a good place for me to do what I want to do. So you see that they've really done their homework on this university. You can always in an SOP also make a case for why the environment, the city of um, the university is also a good place for you to be to do what you want to do. And we have seen throughout this whole essay that this person really cares about identity and social issues and you using human-centered design to close inequity gaps in education. And so we see that, that thread throughout the entire essay. That's what makes it a really good SOP. It's very specific. And they've demonstrated that they are a good fit for this program. The takeaways for your SOP is you want to be very specific about what it is you want to do in your graduate program. You want to demonstrate that you have the skills that are going to make you successful in that program. And third, you really wanna show that this program is a good fit for what it is you wanna to do to be successful in your SOP. If you'd like to have your essays reviewed by me, you can sign up for my free office hours that happen once a month on Zoom or check out my private essay review options and learning community. And you can get my sample essays of students who were admitted to many universities when you sign up for my newsletter.